After nearly three years and 150 videos, I've put out a lot of different ideas and insights. As we close out 2023, I'm counting down the five most important videos I've ever made. Let's stay the dot. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Data Dive powered by Market Movers. My name is Tyler Nethercott, better known as Teapot, and it's hard for me to believe, but I have been making videos for almost three years every week without fail to try to bring a mix of data, insights, philosophy, collector focus, and maybe a little entertainment, at least in that silly intro. And look, I'm no Jeff. I've worked on amping up my energy over the years, and I've listened to feedback from the comments. 150 videos is a lot. And for those of you who have been with me this entire time, thank you, sincerely. I took some time to really reflect on all the different video ideas I have shared, and I narrowed down my list to the five best videos that I have made to date. And as always, this video is brought to you by Market Movers. Visit marketmoversapp.com and use promo code DIVE when you check out. You'll get 14 days completely for free to try out Market Movers and then 20% off for life as long as you're subscribed. Now let's get into the list. All right, so I gotta start with an honorable mention. It's hard with 150 videos to narrow down to just five, but five sounds better than six. So I'm gonna start with this one that I did recently. And the title, as creatively chosen by my beloved video team, was Why I Don't Care About Rookie Cards Emoji. And I caught a lot of heat, especially when people didn't actually watch the video, it seemed like, but they just jumped into the comments. But this one is notable, not why you'd think. Yes, I got some heat in the comments, but really most people, I think, understood. I wasn't saying rookie cards stink or I think they're dumb. I was just saying that they're not my favorite for my collection. For my collection, clarify that. And I personally don't wanna pay the premium for most rookie cards for my personal collection because it's not the thing that I prioritize the most. I like rarity and aesthetics and a cool photo and a meaningful year, all of those things. And so that's the gist of the video more than anything is that there is no such thing as a true collector or true collecting. There may be pure collectors. And I posted this on my Instagram recently and somebody's like, well, some people just collect and they don't invest. I'm like, that's not true collecting. That's pure collecting. Those who only collect and who never sell a single card, that, that's what I would call being a pure collector. And that's totally fine. True collecting is something implied by certain people as though there is a right way to collect or one right way and all other ways are wrong and all their cards are dumb. And that frankly is just not true at all. So that's my honorable mention video, go check that out. Related to that and collecting, this is a video that was actually on the Sports Card Investor channel. You can see that was here. I really had a lot of fun with this video. Did it a while back and it was called the 27 types of card collectors, which one are you? So what I did was I went and highlighted 27, yes, 27 unique ways that people collect. And then I highlighted specific examples from Instagram accounts. So you should check this video out and let me know which one or which ones of those apply to you. You can leave a comment on that video or come back here and let me know, but I'd love to hear it. And hopefully I can find you over on Instagram. All right, video number four that I was excited about. Will Panini cards tank? now that Fanatics has acquired Tops, And this video is eye-opening to say the least. It's all about the death by variation paradigm that we live in of the last five years. And what I did was I got into the numbers more to do with those variations than anything else. It remains to be seen what will happen in the future with so many different cards printed and so many slabs. And I have more to come in a different video on that topic coming up. So that was my number four video. Really the title, was you know, prompted by the acquisition uh, of Tops by Fanatics, but more of the content inside was, let's look at how many new variations and total rookie cards and this sort of explosion of print runs and everything that was happening over time. All right, video number three, why sports card predictive pricing is impossible and card value doesn't come from historical sales data. So this was actually two videos and I've got them out of order that I'm clicking on here, but this was two videos done at different times, uh, but they're very, very related. And so one of the things you hear in the sports card world, especially if it's your card show, comp, 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 what's the last comp? The last comp says this. It's pretty much comp or bust in the world of sports card pricing. And so what I did was I break down the true art and the science of valuing a card, of negotiating, of how people arrive at values, what it means for something to go to auction versus a buy it now, 
how there's that idea of the you know second highest bidder. So if you're the high bidder, is the card really worth that? Or is it worth what the next closest bid was because that's the next person in line? And I also explain why predictive pricing models, in my opinion, are essentially worthless for cards because there are so many different factors that go into the price of a card from seasonality to the specific set to the player. You get the thing in the background with the John Morant Chronicles card with Young Dolph. There's so many things that can skew algorithms that on a specific card basis, it can be very difficult to predict or determine what a card should be worth by using some kind of algorithm. Macro trends may be a little bit easier to do with sort of big data, but you should check out those videos if you're somewhat of a numbers nerd or if you just get driven crazy by the whole comp conversation. Video number two, yep, the junk slab era is here and the data proves it. Skull emoji coffin. This was one of my incredibly eye-opening videos. The numbers just don't lie. There are too many slabs. The hobby, I don't think, can sustain the volume of graded cards over time. I think truly they're becoming junk slabs. Walking into the studio here, I just walked by a PSA 10 base prism cam reddish card that is part of uh, some giveaways that we've done. You know, somebody else sent us this. They said, I don't want this card anymore. I think for an Atlanta Hawks fan, or maybe, maybe even more so a Duke fan, that would be a card that would be fun to have. But that's a card that has just come down, 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 down. We're seeing so many of those. I've talked in the past about, you know, kind of my thoughts around grading premiums. So I don't see how it's possible. Even if Fanatics does 10X the hobby, that we can sustain all of the slabs that are coming into circulation, a million cards a month being graded by PSA. I think it's way too many, but you should check out this video if you want to see why. And I think you'll be astounded at what percentage of total slabs ever graded just a handful of recent players make up. So that was my number two video. And that brings us to number one. In that video, the number one video is what a recession means for the sports card market, my most important video. And this is one of the ones that I worked the hardest on, and it's the video that I am most proud of. I titled it at the time, my most important video, and I still stand by that title. There's a lot in there from economics to philosophy of collecting. We're still hearing a lot right now about a pending recession or financial crisis. I think this video is really relevant. And if you only check out one video from this list, this is the one to check out. So have you seen any of these videos already? And do any of them stand out in your mind? If you do go check them out, I'd love to have you come back and circle into the comments here and let me know your reactions. And we are really, really close. I look at the analytics, like 75% of you watching these videos are not yet subscribed. It would really mean a lot if you could subscribe to this channel. We're so close to 20,000. Thank you so much for watching over all of these years and hours. It is truly a privilege to get to do this for a living and to share in this hobby with all of you. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and until next time, happy investing, keep on collecting, and make sure to have fun.